and fishing. There's the hunt for big bass. There's the camaraderie. Then there's the story. What's your story? I'm Ronald Green, but you can call me Ronnie. I grew up in San Antonio, Texas with my two brothers and two sisters. I went to college at Texas Tech where I was an all-American sprinter. I ran the 200 meter dash and I even qualified for the Olympic trials. After I graduated, I became an officer in the United States Marine Corps. I accomplished a lot, but I wasn't satisfied. After the Marines, I spent the next 15 years in the medical device industry. I gave it my all and it paid off. And I had, by all accounts, a fairly successful life. From the military and athletics to the corporate world and even earning my MBA, I had a great career, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was missing. You see, I caught my first fish with my dad when I was five years old. And no pun intended, I was hooked. My brother and I grew up fishing. I mean, that's all we did. My great-grandmother was a phenomenal fisherwoman and was a great influence in my fishing life. And I realized that throughout my life, in the good times and the bad, fishing had always been my true passion. All my life, I've done the responsible thing instead of following my dreams. But then my kids grew up and I realized it was now or never to follow my passions and pursue my dream of becoming a professional fisherman. So with the support and encouragement of my beautiful wife, I decided to go for it. I've been so blessed to be a professional fisherman for the last six years and I'm never looking back. What up, boy? What's going on? There's nothing like spending the day out on the water, but it's even better when you can get out with someone you love. And I love getting to fish with my brother, Roger. Florida always has weather that changes so much, man. And it's always funny, but I wouldn't want to live any other place. There's a couple other places that we can consider. Well, Tex Texas is always, <laughs> yeah, you Texas know that's always there. Yeah. Everything we've ever accomplished in life, man, think about it, since we were kids, even through adulthood, college, you and the NFL, me and the Marines, we've always fished, man. We've always found time. Why do you think that is? Well, fishing was involved in everything that we did. So right. For example, if we were at church on Friday, the fish that we caught during that week will be the, the thing on the menu on that Friday night <laughs> at the fish fry. <laughs> so, yeah. so we would have a fish fry on the Friday. <laughs> so, you know, uh, again, uh -huh. fishing connected to everything that we did. And exactly. uh, we've been very fortunate to have some, you know, very uh, instrumental people uh, that have been a, a part of our lives. And, you know, our father, mm -hmm. our mother, and then of course, our, you know, our great grandmother. One of the things I learned as a, a parent mm -hmm. when I start to, uh, as an adult, mm -hmm. is that, uh, kids could care less about what mommy and daddy says because yeah. all they're going to do is watch what, what mommy and daddy do. Oh, absolutely. And so I, I'm learning that as a, as a seasoned mm -hmm. uh, uh, adult and, and, and my kids mm -hmm. who are now adults are, mm -hmm. are going to also understand that that's important as well. And so, but getting to that, you talk about the NFL uh, uh, um, and then you talk about the drums you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's an interesting story behind the drums. <laughs> and how you were able to be, become a drummer. Not everybody's aware. They knew about your athletic prowess in the NFL and so on and so forth, but you were a world-class drummer. You know, we were having the service and nobody was on the drums and they were singing some songs. And it was as if I heard something say, go get on the drums. Wow. So I'm walking up there and I'm like, you know, like, 
eight or nine years old. Mm -hmm. And I walk up on the drum, everybody looking at me like, where's he going? What's he doing? I mm -hmm. go and I get on the drum and I start playing as if I had been playing yes. all my life. We were all wondering like, where did he get those <laughs> lessons from? <laughs> And that reminds me of even some of the things you guys did in the NFL. People don't realize there's a lot of phenomenal bass fishermen in the NFL. Especially during the off season, you know, there's a lot of guys in the NFL and, you know, guys that have, have now retired from the NFL that, uh, you know, have a strong affinity to, towards fishing and they fish and they're real fishermen. Oh, so, uh, yes. You know, I've seen it firsthand. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and it, it was amazing. So, mm -hmm. but I surely can't wait till tomorrow, man. I almost want to go throw a bait out right now, but we're going to get them tomorrow. Oh, yeah, we're going to get and, them, and, and, and I can't and, wait either. I mean, this is this is going to be exciting. Uh, this, has been, this has been a long time coming, and yeah. we're ready to create some more fishing stories. You better believe it. I got you. Come here, girly. This fish was caught on the buzz bait, and what they're doing, they're chasing shad. We still got a little bit of low light. And again, if you know anything about a bass, since they don't have eyelids, the low light gives them an opportunity to ambush more, and they don't have to worry about the sun. So perfect fish in the right spot with the right bait. Bye-bye. Not a big fish, but they all feel the same. Hey, Daddy, wake up this morning. Good morning. This is not a big fish, post spawn fish. You can tell he's feeding up, trying to get his weight back, eating a little bit of shad, but he's getting there. I think he's going to be ready come uh, spring training. There you go. Not as good as I thought, but he sure hit it like he owned it. <laughs> hey, you got a hook we can use for some bait. Small fish, but I tell you what, they all feel the same. Just love a good, exciting topwater bite, especially with a buzz bait. I would be out there every day. Because yeah. it was a place of uh, a solemn peace. You can get out there and think with clarity. You know, it's kind of like listening to a radio station. You know, when we were younger, we had the knobs, and you turn to a station, and on the way there, getting to that station, you'd have a lot of distortion. But when you found the right station, mm -hmm. it was clear. Yeah. You had no distortion in the background. And that's the way I see fishing. I get out there on the water, mm -hmm. and I just have clarity, and you can think clearly. You can reminisce. You can make life's decisions, even. Absolutely. And actually have some clarity on that. So. It really has been a place, and who would have thought, going all the way back to Miller's Pond, <laughs> Three Rivers. Well, speaking of Miller's Pond, Miller's Pond is a, you know, that's where it, it all started for us. That's right. In San Antonio, Texas, you know, with the bucket, mm -hmm. the cane pole, <laughs> the, the earthworms, that's right. the stink bait. <laughs> These are the things that started it for yep, us. And, yep. um, you, know, um, you know, you know, just as you said, um, We've had an opportunity to, to to grab a hold of something, or for something to grab a hold of us. That's right. That has now been a part of everything that we that we that we do, and everything that I think that we will continue to do. Mm -hmm.
Hey, what's wrong with you, man? When you gonna catch you some fish, boy? I'm trying to give you a chance to catch up. Yeah, I do need to catch up. He did have three on before we even got rolling <laughs> off the dock. Remember um, how we started, first started fishing, man, growing up? Miller's Pond. We'd sneak off there? Absolutely. Miller's Pond, fishing for brim and uh, bass and catfish. Well, the thing about the way we fish, we would sneak off and tell my mom, because we weren't allowed to leave the street. She <laughs> says, you can stay out there and ride your bike, but you can't leave Laurel Valley. <laughs> So we would sneak and be, off. <laughs> and be inside before the street lights come on. That's it. If not, your daddy's going to get to you when he get home from work. Fishing was a part of everything that we did, you know. It even took us through some really uh, dark places in our lives or mm -hmm. tough, difficult places and, mm -hmm. and helped us to grieve. Because it's always interesting. Mm -hmm. You find out a lot about a person when they lose somebody really, really close to them. Absolutely. One of the things that'll happen, you either go really far south mm -hmm. or you actually latch on to something that has been the foundation of your life throughout your life. Um, you're exactly right. You know, what happens is when you have something that, uh, that is almost, uh, uh, you can use as a, uh, as a, as a tool, um, not so much as an escape, but something that, that uh, continues to, uh, you know, to uh, allow for you to um, get through the times mm -hmm. when things are difficult. Mm -hmm. um, you know, fishing has been that, you know, both for, you know, for you, I know, and also for myself, you know, mm -hmm. uh, even when we lost our mother. Yeah, uh, that it was, was a really very, tough. very tough time uh, mm -hmm. for all of us, you know, mm -hmm. our entire family. Mm -hmm. And during that time, I think fishing played a very uh, important role. Uh, mm -hmm. It was very instrumental just in just in terms of us, uh, you know, staying grounded and, and understanding, uh, you know, what, what it was that we were, we were supposed to do, uh, you know, in moving on and, uh, you know, fishing. You know, I think continues to be that, that very thing that uh, allows for us to stay grounded and understand that uh, life goes on, uh, you don't forget, you live uh, based upon what was imparted in you and that's the wonderful thing that I think that, uh, you know, that we now understand. Mm -hmm. I love good fishing stories. Now just take a minute to ponder and think of one of your most fascinating or vivid memories of a fishing story that you can remember and it's gotta be truthful. Oh, 
Because you know how fishermen are. Absolutely. I try to keep all my fishing stories true. Yeah. Now, the one that comes to mind is the time that we went fishing in North Carolina, where I caught the biggest bass that I ever, ever caught. You talking about when I was in the Marines? When you were in the Marines? Yeah. And oh, that was yeah. Outside of, was it outside of Jacksonville, I think? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Onslow County. And I think we had Ryan. We had what? Ryan, my nephew, your son. Oh, I'm my goodness. Guy. He was probably he maybe five or six. Maybe. Oh, Ryan was like three because oh, he was younger. Yeah, younger he was about yeah. three. I yeah. never forget Early his hat morning. was like this. Yeah. And then he had on his life jacket. Exactly. <laughs> now, we start off very, very early. I remember it was uh, it was a slight mist over, mm -hmm. over the water. Similar to this, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, and a slight mist. We start off very early, and I start off with a hula popper. And uh, I threw it out there. It was you know, maybe one or two casts. I never I turn around, a couple pops, pops, and all of a sudden it sounded like somebody threw a brick in the water. Mm -hmm. Several minutes later, I had the largest bass that I ever caught, uh, to the, even to this day. It was unreal. It was 11, 11, you know, 11 mm -hmm. right 11, three quarters or so. Remember when we would drive up, mm -hmm. they had two John boats, and we would have to pay $5 because he was an older gentleman yeah. that kind of ran it, yeah. you know, and he allowed you to fish it, but you had to pay like $5, and then you can rent mm -hmm. the little John boat, but you had to pedal. <laughs> yeah, you had to pedal out <laughs> throughout the hole. He made sure nobody was gonna come with no kind of engines, not no even trolling of, motors. No electronics. And it was back in the backwoods, and, and I told Ryan, don't you tell your mama you had to pedal, because I had him over <laughs> here doing this. <laughs> yeah. You had a three-year-old yeah. that was out there <laughs> Oh, look at him. There you go. I saw him. I saw him when he came and got it. I saw him. Saw him. Whew. I ran it by a, a bush, and it was just dark. It looked like just dark water, but I knew there had to be a fish there because that's where they're supposed to live. So if you put it in their front living room, you'll make them upset, and then they have to bite. Good fish. Good one, good one, good one, good one, good fish. The thing about it is we were fishing the other side, but the other side had a lot of sun but no cover. And my brother suggested we come to this side and I think it was a good idea because we got a lot of cover over here. And again, these fish's eyes need a little shade. Kind of like the way I'm feeling right now. It's pretty hot. Good fish.
Roderick, it has been off the hook, man. It's always good to catch a lot of fish and have a great time. We caught a lot of fish, but we also had a few kickers. And I'll tell you what, it's even more special when you can share it uh, with your blood brother. And we can reminisce about all about childhood, bro. You know, there's nothing better than being able to do something that you love with someone that you love greatly and dearly. But uh, this has really been an incredible day. Fish were biting. Uh, it doesn't matter the size, but we caught some good sized ones, we caught some small ones, we caught some medium ones, we caught them all. They're all fun to catch, that's for sure. That's right. That's awesome. Fishing has always been important to me. No matter where life takes me, fishing will always be there. I've met some great people, and I found that fishing is just as important to them as it is to me. I've learned that everyone has a good fishing story, and now I want to hear them all. <laughs>